Hello, welcome to Wednesday Club Online, which we're going to have to do for the next four weeks. Hopefully then we'll back in church again and we'll be able to do the Wednesday Club properly again. So I've got a story today and then afterwards I've got some craft stuff as well for you as well. Okay, let's begin by reminding ourselves of last week. Remember last week we had a story about Uncle Gideon and we had a verse in the Bible that said these words. It said, O Lord my God, in you I put my trust. Psalm 7 verse 1. We learned that memory text last week, didn't we? Oh Lord my God, in you I put my trust. Psalm 7 verse 1. And it talks about us trusting God. And I want to think about it again in a minute. But to start, I want to ask you. Today is a special day. What is today special for? The day today is the 11th of November, isn't it? What's special about the 11th of November? Well, you'll tell me it's Remembrance Day. Today... 102 years ago, World War I finished. And we remember the 11th of November as a special day. And we remember all those brave men and women who risked their lives and may have actually died to give us the freedom we have today. Now, war and fighting is not nice, is it? War and fighting, it causes hurt, it causes pain, it causes loss. And remembrance is a day, which we obviously remember today with a Poppy, a no, no, big, big, big poppy there. But we remember those that risked their lives and gave their lives. And it cost people. There are people today that will be very sad because they're remembering people they love that are no longer here. So war and fighting is not nice. But when you love someone and that person you love or the home you love or the country you love is in danger, ordinary people, ordinary people like you and me, your mums and dads will be really brave and will sometimes have to fight to protect and care for and look after the ones they love. They may feel scared and they may not feel very brave naturally. They're not superheroes, they're ordinary people, but their love for the people, they, their families and their friends and their home is bigger than their fears. You know, in the Bible, Jesus tells us these words. Jesus said, greater love has no one in this than to lay down one's life for your friends. Jesus tells us that the greatest thing you can do is to risk your life or give your life for those you love. That love is really, really great. And you know, Jesus tells us about it. And that is what we remember on Remembrance Day, isn't it? People that love someone so much or their land so much that they risk their own lives to protect the people they love. That's really brave thing to do, isn't it? Today's story from the Bible is about a time in Israel's history when Israel stopped trusting God. Instead, they did lots of things that God had told them not to. They broke God's law. They rejected anything to do with God. Instead, they trusted themselves and they thought, we don't need God. We can do things our way. We're going to do just what we want. We don't care if something's wrong anymore. We're going to please ourselves. But it all went wrong because an enemy nation invaded their country, came in and took over their country. The country of the Canaanites next door came in and took over their land. And the king of this Canaanite army was a very powerful, cruel man. For 20 years, he ruled over Israel and there was nothing they could do about it. You see, the Canaan army had a secret weapon, their big iron chariots. Big powerful chariots pull up, big powerful horses. And it's like today, I have an army of 900 tanks, big powerful tanks that no one could stop. Their army was so big and powerful because these 900 iron chariots pull up horses that any army that tried to fight them, they just flattened them. And they were led by a general called Sisera, and he was a very good army general. And no one, not a single Israelite, was brave enough to stand up to the Syrian, to, to Sisera. And the Canaanite army. In fact, all Israel used to do was go and hide in the mountains and the hills amongst the trees where the big chariots couldn't get them. They were scared. They were helpless. You see, they'd forgotten to trust God. They were trusting themselves and they suddenly realised there was a problem too big that they didn't have the answer for and they couldn't deal with. There was no one brave enough or strong enough to save them. But you know, God never stopped loving them. God still loved them. God still cared for them despite the mistakes and despite their sins and God sent a special message to Israel through a lady called Deborah. 
Deborah was someone that did love and trust God still. She always had done. She'd never stopped loving and trusting God. And God spoke to Deborah and gave her a special message to tell the rest of the Israelites. And the message was that they were to trust him. They were to get together an army and they were to fight against the Canaanites. And God promised them that he would give them the victory. And Deborah told the Israelite army leader, a man called Barak, what God had said. And Barak said, well, I'm still scared. There's no way I'm going to risk my life fighting against Sisera and his iron chariots. They will just flatten and destroy my army. I'm too scared to fight. You see, Barak was still trusting himself, wasn't he? He was still trusting his, himself and his Israelite army and thinking, we can't win. There's no way we can win. There's no way we can be free. But Deborah didn't. She trusted God. So Barak turned to Deborah and he said, I'll only go and fight them if you come with me. Now, women in Bible times never went to war. They never fought. That was a man's job. The women never did that. It was unheard of that a woman would go to war. And Deborah says, yes, I'll come. I'll come, she said, because I'm trusting God and I know God is going to give us the victory. So Deborah, even though she's a woman and even though she'd never, ever properly fought before in her life, she went to war with Barak and the Israelite army. But then the incredible thing happened. You see, up to now, the Israelites had all been hiding in the big hills and the mountains. They never went down in the big flat valley because once they got down there, Sirius, Sisera's chariots would just flatten them. So they hid in the hills and they hid in the mountains. But God told them to come out the mountains, to come down into the plain, onto big flat grassland in the valley and fight Sisera there, where Sisera was obviously going to win. But God's plans were bigger and God's plans were better. God had a very special plan in mind because on the day of the battle, there were the Israelite army lined up on one side with Barak leading them and Deborah there as well. On the other side were 900 big iron chariots and the horses churning the ground. And the whole, all that massive Canaanite army lined up, ready to flatten the little Israelite army and win yet again. And suddenly it started to rain. And it rained and it rained and it rained really, really, really heavy. And all the soft mud in the valley, grass becoming all squidgy and squelchy and sticky and slippy. And you know what's like when it's rained really heavy and you go on the mud, you slide and you slip, don't you? And you get it's all squidgy and it gets in your shoes and on your shoes. And as Cicero's chariots began to charge down the valley, because the mud was so soft and squidgy, the chariot wheels got stuck. And the horses churned away with their hooves and it just made it into a massive mud bath and the horses got stuck. And Sisera's big, powerful army was going nowhere. They were helpless. They were stuck in the mud, literally. Not just playing a game, but they really were stuck in the mud. And it was very easy for the Israelite army, who were all on foot, to easily win the battle and defeat Sisera's army. They tried running away, but it was no good. Not a single one escaped. The whole of the Canaanite army was got rid of. The only one that did run away was Sisera the general. He thought he could run away and hide. He found a tent and he thought if he hid in his tent, no one would find him. But even that didn't work. Even he got caught. And Deborah was just an ordinary lady. But Deborah trusted God's promises. She knew that God did never lied. In God's plans, even though they seem crazy to start with about going down in the valley, are always the best plans. Because God done an amazing thing. God kept his promise. Deborah trusted him and God gave him the victory. Deborah really could say, oh Lord my God, in you I put my trust because I know you know what's best. I know you never break your promises. And I know you can't lie and I know you can't forget. And I know with you, God, there's nothing impossible. And God gave them the victory. Thankfully today, we don't have to live in a country with fighting and wars, do we? We live in a very peaceful part of the world and we should be very thankful for that. But you know, there's always a war going on in our lives, isn't there? Between what's good and what's wrong. We know what's the right thing to do and say and the right way to behave, but we don't always do it, do we? The Bible calls those wrong things sin. And you know, it's very easy for us to do things that are wrong. 
Very easy. No one has to teach us to get angry, do they? No one has to teach us to tell lies or say horrible things to people or lose our temper. We're really good at doing those things we shouldn't do. And it's like a battle against something that we just can't seem to win. No matter how hard we try to be good, every now and then you and me get it wrong and we lose again. And you know, not only is it impossible for us to always do the good things and always do the right things, it's impossible for you and me to put right the wrong things we've done in the past. I can't put right some of the things I've said and done, and I've said and done some things I shouldn't do, and so have you. But what's different is that what we can't do, like the Israelites couldn't escape from the Canaanite army, God can do. Because with God, there's nothing impossible. And even though we've done things wrong, God still loves us. He always has. And God promised in the Bible a way to deal with our sin, to deal with our enemy, to defeat our enemy. And it doesn't involve us trying to be good on our own because that's impossible. We're never going to do it. It's an even more special way. God had a special plan. Not long now to Christmas, is it? At Christmas, we remember Jesus coming into this world. God's son being born in this world as that little baby. When Jesus came into this world, even though this world and everyone in this world has done things wrong, Jesus, because he's God's son, was perfect. He didn't have any wrong things in his life. And he lived a perfect life. A life that you and I could never live. But when he was a grown up man, one day Jesus gave that life to pay for my sins and yours. When he died on the cross, God actually punished Jesus, his only son, for the wrong things I've done. And Jesus paid the price instead of me and instead of you. He defeated our sin. He won the victory instead of us. He paid the price instead of us so that we can be free. We can be forgiven. We can be saved. We can become part of God's family. He can become our greatest friend because we've asked him to be our saviour and trusted him. Now Deborah trusted God to give her the victory over the Canaanites and God didn't fail. And you know in exactly the same way God says to you and me today in the Bible, he makes us a promise. He says, trust me. Trust me. Trust my son Jesus to be your saviour. Trust him to pay the price for your sins and forgive you. Trust him to win the victory so that you and I can be God's friends. Are we trusting him as our friend and our saviour? Deborah could really say, oh Lord my God, in you I put my trust. Can you and me say that? On this Remembrance Day, can we say, in you Lord Jesus, I trust. I trust you to be my friend. I trust you to be my saviour. I hope you can. Let's just pray, shall we? Dear Lord God, thank you for this special day of the year. And we remember very brave men and women that gave their lives because they loved and they cared for their families and their friends and their country. And so that we could have freedom today and have peace and no fight in a war in our country. We do pray for parts of the world where there are people that are fighting and people are getting hurt and losing people they love. We thank you for the great love those people had for their families and their countries. But we thank you even more for your love, which is even greater for all of us, so that we can be forgiven and saved by trusting Jesus to be our friend and saviour. Help us to learn to trust you. Trust you with all of our heart, like Deborah did in the story in the Bible. Amen. Now, Crafts are going to be a little bit different, obviously, for a few weeks because we can't just sit at the table and get the felt tips out and do some colouring. But what I've done is I have bagged up crafts for each family of those from Wednesday Club that watch this film. That if you pop into Froom Valley Cleaners, into the factory, in the shop, and just ask, have you a bag there with your name on it? And in the bag this week to make, we've got two things. First of all, there are some poppy bookmarks. A sheet like this that you can have and colour in and cut out to make your own bookmarks to remember it's Remembrance Day. There's something else you've got as well. Also this week there'll be two of these in your bag. Now these are door hangers put on your door and you know do not disturb signs or my bedroom or whatever you want to write on it and to write on these with you've got one of these sticks there be there as well and you can use a stick to scratch off the black and create your own designs, your own pictures, your own messages and write on the door hanger what you want. It all comes up in bright rainbow colours. So 
pop in the factory if you haven't already done it or send mum and dad in on the way home from school one day when picking you up and collect your craft. Okay, all bagged up for you in a plastic, plastic bag, okay? So you can take it home and you can do the craft and there'll be another one next week and there'll be another story next week as well. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Really missing you. Hoping to see you soon. Goodbye.